Hi, I'm Johnny from UltimatePaperMache.com and in this video I'm going to put some wrinkles on my new chimpanzee mask. I didn't actually intend to make a chimpanzee or anything else last week. What I was supposed to be doing is some technical work on my website. It's not hard, but it's tedious because I'm doing every single page at a time. So the best way for me to de-stress is to grab some clay and just start throwing it around and start making something. And I made four different sculptures. And this is the second one. The first one is this white rabbit that I made. I really like his, uh, <laughs> his fake eyelashes. I'll put a link to it down below. This guy obviously isn't online yet because he doesn't have his, his, the wrinkles on his face. That's what we're gonna do in this video. The other two that are coming up that I haven't even made the patterns for yet, uh, there's a, a pit bull <laughs> and, and a clownfish. Totally unrelated. Uh, like I said, I was just trying to get a, away from doing my real work. But now what I want to do is put the wrinkles. Uh, chimpanzees, like every one of them has a different face, just like we do. But they almost all have some wrinkles underneath their eyes. Um, and I want to give this guy just a hint of some smile muscles. I want everything else to be just really plain. I just really like the shape, so I don't want to get carried away adding a whole lot of sculpting. But I do want those wrinkles. Before I forget, though, our old friend, Douglas Witt, he's the artistic director of a theater up in Montreal. He teaches art, and now he is writing a book about how to make masks with the traditional Commedia dell'arte methods, which I probably mispronounced because I personally know nothing about it, but he definitely does. He's a master mask maker, and he's writing a book about it, and he's asked us to fill in a survey so that he can make sure that he puts everything in the book that that we need to know. And he has also written a really nice post for us out on the Daily Sculptures page on my website. So if you would like to help him out a little bit, uh, I really hope you do go and check that out. I'll put a link to his new post right down below. I made up another batch of the flour and water paste. It's just the cooked version and I'll put a link to that down below too. I've got the video. <laughs> I got a video about lots of stuff and I'm also going to use these paper towels. That's what I used on the elephant and it just makes really good skin because of because of the little um, bumps on it. But the one thing that we're going to do for sure, and I'll go ahead and do this right now just to, to show you because it's really important. You can't use two ply paper towels without first taking them apart. Yeah, this is just one piece and I'm, I'm taking it apart. Um, I found out a long time ago that if you try using paper towels with paper mache, the, the bottom part that's up against your sculpture will stick and then the top part will fall off <laughs> when you're not looking. It's not fun. So go ahead and, and take them apart. Another thing you want to do is, with any kind of paper mache is to tear off the cut edges. Um, that's true even with paper towels because the torn edges kind of melt in together and you don't really see them all that much, but the cut edges, they, they really stand out. So you want to take those off. And I want to use fairly big pieces because I'm going to be wrinkling them. I've got a, a photograph of a, a smiling chimpanzee on my Kindle machine. So I'll know where to put the wrinkles. I've got the paste here. It's, it's cooled off now. I just made it a couple of minutes ago, but I've, I've given it time to cool off. And I think maybe I'll start with this ear just so I get used to the idea. How's that sound? That, that, that seems reasonable. I'm trying to keep the photograph uh, out of view because it's copyrighted. <laughs> I don't want to get in trouble for showing it to you. But on the other hand, it's kind of in the way. I don't want it to, I don't want my tablet to get paste all over it, <laughs> so it'll, it'll be okay. I'm going to make sure that it's all stuck down really good. Most chimpanzees have like a, a tuft of hair that comes down in front of their ear. I haven't quite figured out how to do that yet. And I don't know if it would be done with yarn. It, it, it's usually really kind of stiff looking hair. Um, I haven't quite figured that out. If you have any ideas, let me know. 
Okay, so I'm just kind of gotten used to it, um, feeling what happens um, when you fold it over onto itself. It makes a line. I decided I don't like that. So I'm just kind of getting used to it. And now I can go ahead and get started on his face. The, the, the photograph I've got in front of me has really interesting wrinkles right between his eyes and under his eyes and over his nose. It kind of goes like that with a dip in the middle. When it gets folded over like that accidentally, then it makes that line I don't like. So I can get rid of that. And it is capturing a lot of air under there, so you have to be really careful about that. You need to have plenty of paste under there or it won't slip the way it you need it to. And try to get this one to sort of meld in with the others so that it doesn't look like there was two pieces of paper. And try to see if I can get a wrinkle between the others right here on his under his eye. Just sticking that under there because I don't don't need it. Trying to get his laugh lines. Kind of stand, starts out up here a little bit higher, I think. Like that. For some reason, the, this wrinkles that go right across his, his uh, the top of his muzzle making him look younger and happier. I like that. I wanted to make a baby one, but it didn't fit the shape <laughs> of a human head because the, um, the baby, baby chimpanzee's face is just a, a, too much different from ours to make that work. I want his, the, the top of his muzzle to have the, um, the skin bumps, but I obviously don't want it on his teeth. I'll just be painting the teeth on there. I'm not going to um, sculpt them or anything. Although you could, that'd, that'd be fun, but I'm not going to do it. Ah. If I did sculpt them, I'd probably get out my epoxy sculpt and, and do it that way with the teeth. There's got to be a way to get that off. There we go. Maybe that, that'll work. Paper towels, maybe it's just because I buy cheap ones, but they tear really easy when they're wet. Which is a good thing in this case.
was trying to match these up a little bit better. I just now realized one reason why I'm having a little bit more trouble sculpting with my paper towels than I did when I used the same method on the elephant. And <laughs> I should have thought of it before. Um, I didn't use paste when I did the elephant. I used the homemade gesso recipe that's on my website. It's a, it's just white glue thickened up with a little bit of the premixed joint compound. And because it's heavier and not as wet, the paper towels didn't tear quite as easily. And the, the thickness of that mixture kind of um, props up the wrinkles a little bit. You know, it gets behind the wrinkles and holds them in place. Where right now I don't have any anything under the wrinkles other than the wet paste. And that is actually making a difference. But this also works. It's just not it's just not quite the same as it was before. You might want to um, I, I think I have a um, I think I have a video about the elephant's skin and I'll, I'll put a link to it if I can find it. I'm, I'm pretty sure I have one. I'll put a link to it down below if you'd like to watch it. One nice thing about the the paste uh, softening the paper is that when you have a, a spot where you really need it to be flat and it wants to be wrinkled you can just kind of press it out. So now basically I have all of the paper towel on there. He's got skin on his face and on his ears but we don't really know how it's going to look until it dries. That's going to take maybe a couple of hours. I'll stick it in front of my little um, battery operated fan and I'll be back with you in just a couple of seconds. So that didn't take too long. It's, not, it's still not dry enough to paint, but it's dry enough so you can kind of see how he looks. Uh, the, the wrinkles are on there, but it's still really simple. I, I didn't want to do any grand uh, sculpting, like I said. I just wanted a few wrinkles to make him look a little bit more like a chimpanzee. Now, I am going to put gesso on this and paint it, but I or actually ordered some gesso. It should be it should be here in a day or two, and as soon as that's done, I'll go ahead and paint him, and then you can see how he turns out. Um, I've got some ideas for painting the darker parts of, of his face, where he doesn't have any fur, he's just got skin there, but it's a little bit darker. And I have an idea that for that part that I got from that crazy <laughs> ogre mask that I made. <laughs> it is really ugly. But I did learn something and I'm going to be using it um, for the dark parts of our chimpanzee's face. So be sure to watch for that. If you're not subscribed, go ahead and, and do that now. Also remember, uh, Douglas is really hoping that you'll help him out with a survey for his Commedia Del Art book. So be sure to check out Douglas's post. I'm going to put a link to it right down below. Uh, watch for the next video where you get to see how the the chimpanzee turns out. Make sure that you also watch for the videos on the uh, pit bull and the uh, clownfish. Those are coming up too. I don't know how long they'll take me. I haven't actually got the patterns completely done yet, but. I'm really looking forward to the to the pit bull. I think that's going to be so cool. In the meantime, go make something and come visit me, ultimatepapermache.com. I'll see you there.